So let's have a look at source A. And we need to look at the details first of all. So as you can see, we've got source A here, and let's have a look at where it's actually come from. It's from the Norman Conquest by Mark Morris. Now this date here is important for us when thinking about the wider impact. By 1069, many of the wealthier people in the north of England began to rebel against their new Norman masters. This is something that William the Conqueror simply was not going to put up with. As you can see in the source, it says William was determined to show he would not accept any resistance and he sent his army north, which involved sending troops out to kill people, burn buildings and crops, smash tools, seize wealth and devastate large areas. Now often, the Normans and other people in history, as you can see here, they're actually depicted as some kind of jovial soldier. Now we should not underestimate the power that they had and the impact that they had on normal people. So just looking at that, we need to highlight it involved sending troops out to kill people. This was a conscious decision to make it clear to the English people in the north that William the Conqueror would not tolerate any kind of rebellion. And they did indeed burn buildings. They did indeed destroy crops. I've actually put a salt pot there because even some of the soldiers put salt into the fields where they grew crops so that would make the soil infertile. In addition to this, refugees fled south from the killing and the resulting famine because there was indeed a famine because there was very little food. Now the idea behind the slaughter was to show conclusively that William was in charge. This was William's opportunity to make it really clear that he would not tolerate anybody going against him. Now, this is quite shocking, because some historians have argued that up to 100,000 people died. Now, this is in a country of actually 2 million. So, this is a proportion, this is... 5% um, of the entire population, 100,000 people died during the three months of the attack. And this event became known as the harrowing, sorry, the harrowing of the North, because it was a period of considerable cruelty. So it's important that we identify that it was the soldiers who were ordered to go to the North and attack the different areas where the rebellions were going on. You can see here that this, as I put in, it's obviously not a photograph, but this could have been a scene from the period where the Normans were attacking villages and they were killing people, murdering families, murdering innocent children. And this was obviously, as this historian Mark Morris has highlighted, that this was a period of considerable cruelty. So let's go back to the question and we need to consider what was the impact of the Norman conquest, of the Norman invasion. And it's clear from this very early period, because remember the year or the time frame of Source A, it's looking at 1069. Remember this is just three years after the Norman um, invasion. So in the short term, everybody, it's clear that the har harrying of the North was obviously an event that was incredibly traumatic for England. We know that lots of people died, it's very difficult to get a specific figure, but approximately 100,000 people were dead as a result of the Normans proactively going into the north and attacking different villages and those people who were rebelling. But they even went further because they actually destroyed things like crops and put salt in their fields. So in the short term, everybody, around 1069, the period after 1066, the impact was clearly extremely negative. However, we must consider what other historical sources are telling us and consider the wider time frame of the longer term, the longer term after the initial period of 1066.